So this will be a quick video on what would you do if you uh, run a reaction and you have a solid that you need to separate from a solution. And either the solution or the solid is sensitive to air or moisture. So how do you filter off that compound? Separate those two things without exposing them to air. That's what we're gonna get into now. So one of the ways that you can do an air-free filtration is of course in the glove box. Um, and just do it like you would normally on the bench. So you have a fritted funnel and a gasket and uh, a filter flask and you attach a hose to that and pull vacuum. This glove box, we have an external vacuum. So we have the valve right there to turn it on from the inside. And this one from the outside and then the vacuum pump is around the corner over there. Um, this though has the downsides that certain solvents you can't use, anything that's gonna damage your catalyst. Um, you wouldn't want to use or avoid using if you can. Um, so yeah, the, the downside to doing a uh, air sensitive filtration in the glove box is of course any the, the solvent fumes that you would get in your glove box atmosphere. Then it's also a little bit more difficult than doing it on the bench just because you're doing it through the glove box. So that's something to be aware of. But this, this is one option. Um, if you can't do this, there are other options which we'll go look at now. So another one of the methods that we can use to separate um, solids from liquids under air-free conditions is using a special frit designed to be used under inner atmosphere. So it's a frit that's kind of like a flint flask. There are different types. This one has a Teflon stopper here so we can control when things go through the frit. There's also the other style that just doesn't have that, so anything you put in there immediately gets passed to the frit. So, the way this will work is we need to make sure that we have an outlet for the, um, the gas in our receiving flask. Um, so we need to make, it's best if you can have a two neck flask to catch in so that you can have a place to put a bubbler. Otherwise you have to try to fiddle with putting a septum on at the end of your uh, schlenk stem here and putting the bubbler in through there, which could get annoying in a hurry. So, what we'll do here is we'll take just a regular cannula, I'll put this flask under night, get the nitrogen flowing on this flask here, put one with our compound in it, put our sep put our cannula into it, put that into our flask that we're gonna be filtering into, and then we'll go ahead and open. our Teflon stopper, and then take our bubbler and put that into the bubble thing. And as you can see, we're getting gas going through from up there into there. So now we can take our solution make sure this is going to be in shot. There we go, and we're filtering. So this is good if you want to keep the salt, the solution, because it will be going into a flask, and then afterwards you can um, evaporate that solvent if that's what you're needing. So, um, this also kind of keeps the solid. If, if you uh, most of the solid in the in the flask that you're uh, cannula transferring from. So pretty straightforward. Bubbler out of the way. So much like just a cannula transfer between schlink flasks, you just can do that same system through through the funnel where you have your bubbler down here attached, so that you have an outlet for gas that will help push the solution through the through this frame. And again, this is best for being able to save your solution rather than the solid. Um, if you're careful with your cannula, you can save the solid in your original flask. Those looks like a little bit of solvent will be left behind. With the 
uh, fritted funnels for air-free filtrations. Um, oftentimes they're coarse frit. These one, this one is, and the other one I used in the earlier clip is as well. And if you're saw that your filtering is very fine, you can put a layer of sea light on top of the frit to help catch the small particles. It's important though that the sea light is dried in the oven first. The sea light can contain water, which you obviously don't want around if you're trying to protect your compound from water in the first place. So an important thing then is if we're trying to uh, keep the solution, we need to keep it under um, air-free conditions, is how to get this filter off. Um, and much like any other sort of system where you would do if you would want this line to already have been purged, been open to nitrogen, stiff, there we go. So you have good nitrogen flow, lower this, let's make sure my nitrogen is a bit higher. Adjusting my output of nitrogen and then we can hear the gas hissing. we would have our solution um, filtered and under nitrogen. So if we want to retain the solid and uh, keep that in a certain flask, one of the good ways to do that is with a filter cannula. So this is one that's already been made and I'll show how to make one of these now before I use it and then we'll get on to how it's used. But it's essentially just some filter paper on a cannula or a needle so that we can leave the solid behind in our flask. So put that there. So to make a filter cannula, we first need a needle. Um, a cannula that's double-ended can also be used, but it's a bit easier when you have something that has a, either a lure lock or there are certain needles that have just a cylinder here. That is also easy to, um, to use for that kind of thing, to make a filter cannula. So what we're just gonna do is we'll get some Teflon tape. We wanna keep it as flat as we can, and we want probably about 18 to 20 inches. More is fine. Better than having not enough. Cut that. We have a long strip of Teflon tape that's ready to go. And I'm just going to hang that up here on this shelf and let it sit there while I, until I'm ready to use it. And we'll take some filter paper and cut a square out of it. Um, I need one square that's maybe inch and a half to two inches in uh, square. So this circle is plenty big for that purpose. So, something like that. And we'll take our, uh, the end of our needle here, fold it up there. Like that. And now it's important that this lower creep, part of the crease also is folded up so that we don't have any creases that are occurring lower that can have solid pass through them and get into our um, solution that we're trying to filter. So we can kind of push that center part up and then wrap these around and kind of do the same thing. And wrap those around. So we make this sort of little like folded napkin look. And then um, it doesn't have to be pretty, it just has to work wrap the top end around. Then we want to get our Teflon tape and start wrapping it around the, the filter. I want this to be kind of tight at the bottom. And it's important to try to keep your Teflon tape as flat as possible. This can also be difficult while wearing gloves because the static between the Teflon tape and the gloves can make it kind of want to stick to your gloves and be a headache. Maybe a tiny bit big. It's 
better if you can have the top of your filter paper be near the top of the, the lure lock or whatever metal piece you have at the bottom so that you don't have to wrap your uh, Teflon tape as high up the needle. You've got it to, you want it to seal up at the top as well. So, keep wrapping this. Ooh. back down and wrap a bit around the lower portion. And my Teflon tape cut away from it a little bit. filter paper at the bottom with all of, as many of the creases going up as you can and then it's wrapped with Teflon tape to seal it up against the top. Then you need a septum. No, septum. And you want to put that on this backwards so that the lower part of the septum is going to be towards your filter which is going to be going into your flask. So we'll just tap that through this way. a filter some cannula made. Additionally you can take a second piece of filter paper, another square, and cut another square and wrap another one over it and then wrap that with tape as well. That would give you another layer especially if you're filtering really fine solid um, and then you, it might help. Another way to do it is to take two squares originally just make sure that if you have the two squares that you rotate them a little bit um, from how they might be stacked up in the box so that you don't just have the, uh, the holes of the filter paper kind of lined up which wouldn't really approve your filtration at all. So let's take one of these out and try it out. We've got our filter cannula ready to go. We've got our flask to receive, our bubbler up there. So what we need to do first is uh, uh, we need to put this into here. So what we'll do is we'll push nitrogen into our um, flask containing our compound. Just get that as close to, we, to there as we can so that we can keep it out of the liquid until we're ready to filter. Sure that we maintain a positive pressure out so we don't get any gas in to destroy our compound. Well, bubbler over here. So we should be getting gas across our bubbler. Let's see, we are. filtering. See we're pushing the solid over to that side. Okay, and then we just reverse the process. We'll remove this and we're still pushing nitrogen here. We can swap back to our, actually we can swap to a stopper now. I will swap another septum. Back to our old septum. That. And there we are. So, um, if your solid cakes up on the bottom of your uh, filter cannula, the filter paper portion, when you're removing that, 
you might want to remove it more slowly and then have a spatula handy so that you can scrape whatever solid might have collected on the bottom of your filter back into your vat, into your flask so that it can be protected as well, all while maintaining that nitrogen stream coming out of your Schlenk flask through this line. If you need to dry the solid that's here, if it didn't get completely, um, if the solid, did, if the solvent here didn't get completely removed, you could just pump on this like you would if you were removing solvent on the line. See the other video for that. But just collecting the extra solvent here in an extra, in a separate trap would allow you to remove just any of that extra little bit of trace solvent that might be still there. Um, but yeah, that should cover it for air filtration.